from Adam's house and Gina's house and Brian's house, this is the Adam Carolla Show. Adam's guest today, Adam Ray. With Gina Grad on news, Bald Brian on sound effects, and Dave Damashek's here for good sports. And now, considering his anger about horse trails, ironically, he has no idea what Animal Crossing is. Adam Carolla. Yeah, he get it on. Got to get it on a choice, but get on Mandy. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sharing. We appreciate you turning uh, us on, our friend on, to what we're doing. Good day, Gina Grad. Good day to you. Handball, Brian. What do you mean I can't put this there? <clears throat> yeah, Adam Ray's going to be in or on, and I'm excited uh, to talk to him. Um, I had a long, confusing odyssey this morning, and I, I realized... <laughs> you recorded with Dr. Drew? Um, there, well, there was, there's always... <clears throat> confusion is sort of like if you can spread it out, then it's okay. But when it all comes in, you know, a two-hour period, it Hailing gets, down it, on you. it's devastating. Yeah. So I was confusing morning and beginning part of the day, which was, it started off last night. Last night, I get a text from Kevin. Kevin's the young guy. Um, most of the young guys and most people now that I realize are sort of out of it. I think they stare at their phone too much. They're, they're, they're zoned out. They're not yeah. tuned in. And, and they also, here's an interesting point. They don't know how to read the, the tea leaves or the landscape or the whatever. Like I, I'll give you an example. This will show up later on. If you work for me and you worked on a lot of building projects that I've worked on, you'd see a lot of stuff painted in grays and blues and in whites and things like that. If somebody handed you a paint can of bright pink and said, this is that color Adam chose for the bathroom, you'd go, hold on. Okay, I know that's what you're telling me, but let, you know what, I wanna check with Adam. I'll take a picture of the can and I'll send it to Adam because. This does, it'll take two minutes, but this doesn't seem right. I feel like an Adam request. You guys remember in math class, like they, they would tell you to do a reality check at the end because you get so far into your calculator or so far into the long division or whatever it was, like the number came out one, but you're like, does that make sense? You know what I mean? I like at the end Adam of it, like, does that make math. sense? Right. Uh, I thought it was okay at math. <laughs> No, I did that. We didn't have a calculator. We had acorns and we put like five <laughs> acorns on the right side and then five on the left. And that's you how we the knew. beans over on the abacus. We'd, yeah, we evenly divided the acorns. Um, there's two parts of life. There's sort of what a person is saying and what is being done, like a verbatim part of life. Like someone hands you a paint can and goes, here you go, that's the paint, put it on the wall, and then you leave. That's the super verbatim part. Then there's another nuanced part where you have to keep thinking, why would he do that? Or yeah. well, that doesn't seem like him. Or right. That's where you kind of study patterns. You know, mm -hmm. you, you kind of, and that, that's the other half of it because the nuance, the verbatim stuff gets screwed up all the time. You, you'll really understand people better if you really understand the more nuanced part of them, of life, of patterns. Young guys are, are all done with it now because they just, they, they stare at their phone too much or something. They're not mm -hmm. using that part of their brain. You're talking about critical thinking. Anyone, you know, with enough training can follow directions and God willing, we all can. But the critical thinking part comes like, does this sound right? Is that what I'm supposed to do? Is this going to fit? Whatever right. that critical thinking element is. Right. And we're all guilty of it. So I have these big floor tiles. This is where this thing starts. It starts last night. I have these big floor tiles. And half of them came in. And the other half are on a ship from Europe or China or God knows where. So about a week ago, I say to the porcelain punisher, ironically porcelain tile i say uh matt the one uh, to go to. yeah where's that tile and he's he licking his lips <laughs> he says it's uh it's still at sea it should be here in a couple of week or two they're gonna hit us up when it, when it pulls into port i say okay it's been about a week maybe 10 days i get a text from young kevin uh who's well-meaning but doesn't doesn't have that context that we talk about 
explain. Sorry, you, you almost explained, then you stopped. Explain what Kevin does or what his... What it, Kevin what is, is a young guy who's like the son of one of the guys who's working, and I'm trying to keep him busy, but he... The, Lynette and Natalia won't let him in the house. So I have to keep thinking of things for him to do outside oh, of my house gotcha. so I can try to keep him employed to some way, shape, or form. You know, just as, uh, as extra context, was he the one with the phone on the grass that was no, kind of lounging that, about? Okay. No, that guy, Brian probably with a Y, right. is, is not coming <laughs> back. Way. And the reason that guy's not coming back is, as I said, I, I, I've been bending over backwards looking for work, trying to keep these people moving, because these guys, unlike the, the news media and unlike the city officials who do get paid, these guys don't get paid. Right. And mm -hmm. they don't have businesses to get them reimbursed. And I know there's something for them, but whatever it is, it ain't working. And I'm trying to come up with stuff to keep them moving. Uh, the other guy who's playing Dungeons and Dragons or shoots and ladders or whatever he was playing while I was <laughs> trying to keep him employed. <laughs> yeah, that guy, that guy said, stay home because I'm not going to bend over backwards trying to keep you busy if you're sure. going to play video games Good. in my yard. So he's at home, but uh, well-meaning Kevin's here. And um, so I get a text from Kevin last night. And it says, the tile has arrived. Shall I pick it up in the morning? Matt, Matt Fondelier just, just told me the tile has arrived. And then I didn't do what I've been telling you guys to do. I go, he, Matt told you the tile arrived? You didn't tell me. <laughs> but on the other hand, I don't know. Maybe he's just telling you, go get it. And, Get, get going. Maybe it's going to tell me tomorrow when I talk to him or something, or it'll be a surprise or something. But I, I stopped and I went, eh, that's peculiar. Um, and uh, so I woke up this morning a little excited that this uh, tile that I'd been waiting on that had been out to see, which I was worried was going to show up in a month, was here already. So I shoot him a text at 10 o'clock last night, like, by all means, get that tile. Um, <clears throat> so today... I'm going to get up. I'm going to go do Dennis Prager's radio show. I'm going to bring uh, Sonny with me. Are you uh, filling in? No, I'm just going to be a guest on a oh. show. And Sonny's pumped. He loves Dennis. And uh, I'm excited. He's to do the show. lead guest. <laughs> <laughs> and then... <clears throat> And then I'm going to come back and do Dennis Quaid's podcast. And uh, that's at like 1130. So I get up, uh, I get dressed, uh, I shave, oh. I, uh, I put on sweatpants. Um, <laughs> and I was, uh, I went and I roused Sonny, tell him to eat something. Here we go. And we're walking it's we're walking out the door at about 9 40 and as we're walking out the door i get a text dennis is canceled and there's a change of plans do not go mm. and i go oh okay and then i was a little embarrassed like sonny was standing by the door and i was and he's like here we go and i was like uh, uh dennis canceled and he was like why would he cancel and i'm like i I don't know. Like he, he maybe wanted to talk about something else. I, I, I don't know. I, I find it peculiar, which was another moment where I could have stopped. It was a ruse so Dennis could steal your tiles. <laughs> That's right. So are we, are we headed towards the witch Dennis scenario? Oh, yes, we are. Oh. I, I then, I then, <laughs> I then look at my phone again. I then look at my phone again. And this time it's a text from Kevin who announces Sorry, I said it was the tile. It turns out it was a faucet for a sink that was at Home Depot that Matt sent me to, that said it's ready. Go pick up the faucet at Home Depot with the fucking picture of the faucet and the map and like everything. That's I, exotic. He's looking confused. But read this stupid, you know, the, we have all this information and we're more confused. Yeah. Matt sent him a thing that said, here's Home Depot, faucet, ready for pickup. Like, the tile's not from the Home Depot. It, it's another place, a tile place, uh, other side of town. Like, you, if you read half of that or, or quarter of that email, you would have never, or that text, you would have never read, read about the tile's ready. 
But anyway, so now I'm standing there and I'm like, Ugh. okay, De Dennis canceled the tiles, no tile. I got this stupid spigot thing. Which I would have told him, don't pick it up because it's just a, it's a cheap item. I got a bunch of other stuff to get, leave it, go to work or whatever. But now he's waiting in line at the Home Depot. Fine. Uh, I get my car. I start driving uh, out to the uh, to the shop, and now it's uh, ten thirty in the morning, oh, no. and I get that text from uh, Prager's producer saying, "Are you coming in?" And I'm like, "Huh? You big no. time? What?" And then I get a call, and he goes, uh, "Are you coming in? What's going on?" And uh, now you have that feeling of that horrible feeling which is yeah. obviously I was supposed to be there at 10 and now it's 10 30 and I didn't show up according to him and I'm like no your guy told us it was canceled and he's like what guy and I'm like some guy named David and if you slow down and you look at everything the clues are always there like the email says uh Dennis's schedule changed Dennis can't do it today Dennis Dennis can't tape today but he said right. use words like tape, tape instead of broadcast and dennis's yeah. schedule change like I, what does that mean a schedule change he's going in he broadcasts every day it's a regular yeah. radio show you know so something come came up and dennis's schedule change he can't tape today those are like little clues that yeah. why is that prager but i didn't have anything i got the email for me but i didn't look at it. i just had the dennis cancels dennis cancels so anyway uh, I then called Matt. Matt uh, did that thing where he got out of the gate as right as rain. Like he was like, "What do you mean? I got an email from this guy. Look at it right here, sitting right now. I got like five emails from this guy." And then at a certain point, I went, "Dennis Prager or Dennis Quaid?" And my favorite part of life is the realization the, the part. Like Matt, Matt, Matt was like shot out of a cannon. Like this is an insult. I got six emails. <laughs> I'm looking at them right now. And then I go, Dennis Prager or Dennis Quaid? And he goes, uh, uh, oh. <laughs> I could hear like it sunk in. Uh, now, it was fucking horrible. It was a horrible moment. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so sorry. Matt, we've had a few of those. Oh. Yes. Yeah. We've had a we've had a couple of those in our, our existence, right? Mm-hmm. Do I ever pile on or say anything overtly negative during those moments? No. Thankfully, you're a very forgiving person, and I love you for it. <laughs> he no, passive aggressively oh, waits for the, the mics right. to be I on. Bring it for the air. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, is I never stick it to the person. Now, meanwhile, I just stiffed my good friend, Dennis Prager, and I stiffed my son. Yeah. And ironically, I was on a freeway, like driving past his studio when Alan was saying, uh, were you coming in or not? Like, I felt, I felt horrible, but I knew that Matt already felt bad enough for the both of us. You see, this, for me, it's like, when Matt realized he'd canceled the wrong dentist, <laughs> me trying to make him feel bad at that moment would have been completely redundant. Yeah. It would have, it would have been like drawing a, a Sharpie dick on a forehead of a guy who was buried in dung. Yeah. Like it was it, it, no reason. Now, yeah. if you guys will notice, I get pissed off at, people that get defensive and go hey i was told you know or you never said uh, then, then i jump all over them the second they go oh fuck i fucked up i go good we're done because you already feel horrible what do i what do i need to do right. and you made a mistake you're not you're not clinging to your mistake and you're not going hey man i was told right. no you just go <laughs> i fucked up and then we just turn the page you already feel like shit so do you feel like the page just turned matt <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, good. yeah. Or, I mean, I knew, obviously, we're going to bring it up on the podcast, too. But, I mean, we, it's all good. Everything's rescheduled. We're good. What would Ellen have done? Oh, God. <laughs> Before or after the dancing. <laughs> you don't want to wear that. What would Ellen do bracelet? So, um, now, um, this is all under this other backdrop of a couple of sinks we bought that we tried to communicate with Ozzy with over the phone and oh. one of them was missing a hanger that came with it. Ozzy can't communicate and it, it, it's been some of the most confusing stuff ever. And then at a certain point, I go walking into my new 
project warehouse and walk into the bathroom and it's it's the entire bathroom is painted baby poop brown like a light pukey poopy brown the entire thing perfectly painted but entire thing's painted brown and i said uh what why is my bathroom brown i i wanted it to be swiss coffee white and they went this is the paint jose got from the home depot and he gave it to us and he told us this is the paint and i said uh how, how can this be the paint i told him to get swiss coffee interior semi-gloss and i look at the can and the can is a custom mix so it doesn't have a name on it. it's just right. puke brown <laughs> it's puke brown exterior satin oh and i'm like wow what is this what, what's going on and he's like that's what he gave us and like i called sean now sean is competent and sane and i called sean i was like sean what would you tell jose and he said swiss coffee semi-gloss interior i was like well why do i have a brown can of exterior paint here and he's like i don't know i'll call jose and he calls jose <laughs> then jose just goes i walked into the home depot i told the guy swiss coffee and this is what he gave me and i'm like first off little little tip folks when you go into home depot they have a whole bunch of paint custom colors you can mix or they can mix for you which mm -hmm. means pull a ticket and stand in line and it could be a long line sometimes at the paint counter. But there are a few colors they just have. And one of them is Swiss coffee. And it's just, it's, it's kind of an off white, it's kind of generic white. It's probably all over your guy's house, Brian. The blinds behind you are yeah. probably Swiss coffee. It's not coffee. quite eggshell, but it's not quite bone. A crew. It, it's 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 just it's just a it's just a yeah. it's it's a white that's not a brilliant it's not a white. bright just, white right and it's it's what a lot of moldings and crown moldings and baseboard and shit paint so I said go in and grab a gallon of Swiss coffee interior semi gloss thinking he was just going to walk down the aisle and grab a right. can like you grab a a paint roller and walk out because I'd already figured I didn't want him waiting for custom colors in line but the good news is. He waited for a custom color, then he brought it, then those guys put it up, and then my favorite part of any, any exchange is when I'm on the phone with Sean, and I'm going, Sean, he got this puke brown. What the hell happened? And Sean goes, I don't know, but don't let him start painting. <laughs> it's completely done. And by the way, the pencil. <laughs> I don't know why, but the fact that those guys are really good at painting makes it worse because they did a really good job of painting this thing puke brown. Also, again, they've never put up one thimble full of puke brown for me in the 20 years I've worked with these guys. Why, why not just stop? Everything was Swiss coffee. Everything was like off blue. Everything is gray. Like, why? Why not stop? And again, everyone can communicate now. Yes. Well, no, I'm curious. What is a puke brown? Is that a dark brown? Is that a light brown? Because I've got like, taupe, as you can see here. We like the taupe, but is, that a, is it much worse than what we got? I'm it's thinking of like band, like Band-Aid brown. <laughs> this, is, this is insane, but it is almost exactly the brown that is behind you. <laughs> I, I literally, I have the can in my car. I will go, I'll, I'll grab it. I'll show it to you. But here's it's funny, the thing. It looks darker because it's dark in here. But I was still like, sure, oh, no. sure. Here's, no, here's the, here's the thing. First things first. They're like warm colors and there's sort of, I don't know. Here's, the, here's, what, here's what I tell everyone. If you are living in a colonial house or Tudor house or French Normandy or something, it is a completely different palette than if you're painting a race car. The, it, you would not sure. want your kitchen to have the same palette as my race cars, but you wouldn't want your race cars to be taupe and brown and beige and skin mm -hmm. color and Swiss coffee. Yeah. So it, I am build. I'm working on the bathroom of like an industrial, like a modern industrial kind mm. of automotive thing, which to sure. me is these bright colors and not a little less of the Adobe kind of kind of vibe. Gotcha. So it's it's not necessarily indictment of the color. It's why is that color in my bathroom in my modern automotive 
automotive warehouse, which uh, it, it's going to think of it like, you know, you want it to look like the lobby of a big agency yeah, yeah. that's super modern and whatever, not a warm or cozy kind of, kind of place. But as I look at the color behind your thing, <laughs> I'm going, Damn you guys it. talk amongst yourselves. I swear to God, I'm going to go walk to my car and grab it sitting on the, <laughs> now, Great I don't know how it works with Jose when he just walks in and tells the guy Swiss coffee. Also, I don't know what happens with the guy at the Home Depot who hears Swiss coffee and goes, I'll make you up a random brown. <laughs> Is it possible? He said, he, the guy only heard coffee. There was a language barrier situation. I, I guess, but I, wouldn't the guy have like some more questions? Yes. Like, yeah. what are we talking we about? So. Like, go, there's a whole wall of swatches. There's bear swatches and Dun Edwards and whatever swatch. Go find the one that you're talking about and bring right. it to me. I'll mix that one up. I'm not just going to. So what the fuck is going on with communication? I guess is what I'm saying. Like, what? why is everyone so fast and loose with communication? Yeah, what, that's we're, crazy. We're getting... There's emails, there's texts, there's like photographs, there's maps with pins on them and stuff. Mm -hmm. Why are we so gone in the communication department? Why can't Sean say to Jose, gallon, Swiss coffee, interior, semi-gloss? Well, the other thing is, I'll tell you what the other thing is. Why aren't people asking questions? Like, you know what you should say? What's it for? Because if someone says, oh, it's going on the outside of Adam's barn, <laughs> that's Coming different right than the inside of the... That's all... Oh, well, true, but the, 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 the things you listed, the uh, semi-gloss interior Swiss coffee, I don't, I don't know as much about paint as you do, but I know enough to know that those are very common uh, denominators for, for paint. Those, those are specific things. You can it's go, just, it's get, all on the shelf. Yeah, you'll find that on the rack. Like, that's not something you have to have, you know, bespoke. All right. Yeah. I'm going to try to color match it to uh, Brian's <laughs> wall back there. You, you guys talk amongst yourselves. All right. You, know, you can, yeah. I'm trying, trying to get away from, you can see where the lights are actually I, shining. I can. Like I it's, can. it's a little more. We, I know for a fact we picked out a toe. Christy, we're painting. <laughs> it, it's kind of like a like a light leather color, yeah, and it's, it's perfectly fine. lovely in a kitchen. Um, but did we get to the point? Did, did it? I did I stroke out during that, or did he say if they repainted it or not? I do not think they repainted it. Oh. I think it's still going to be a, a bracing reminder every time he takes a shit. <laughs> I, ironically i was gonna say maybe that's the whole move maybe it's supposed to inspire you um i hope you don't take this extra personally because Is it your... really does look super fine behind you no this oh, whole conversation the, yeah the brown yeah i i'm, I'm we're happy with it because it's it nice doesn't contrast. look brown. It's nice contrast against the, you know, the white. It also looks now, darker because, like I said, this is where the sun shines. It I get it. I, there's All only right. so much I'll, of that. I'll hold it up and see if you can oh, no. see that. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty similar to what we got going on here. You don't like taupe? <laughs> Not in the bathroom oh. in my custom warehouse. That God is no it. good. So we, we have to know, is it being repainted or not? Yes, it's being repainted. And no, there's nothing I ever do to these guys <laughs> because they're all basically poor-ish people. They're not, it's, it's, it's one thing, I, and I don't know how you guys feel. I've had this happen a million times. I just eat it. I just, I just eat it. Yeah. I just eat it. I buy another. Yeah. I was literally walking out of my brown bathroom and Roberto just went, you want me to go get the Swiss coffee and paint it? And I was like, yeah, like there's nothing. What are we going to do? Uh, that guy, I'm not, I don't want a brown bathroom. Um, these guys aren't, they're not, they're not poor, but I have more money than they do. And I, these are, these are, these are, honest mistakes they're, they're yeah. but they're really avoidable stupid honest mistakes which is the part that kind of drives me nuts but if i thought they were being vindictive or right. something but really they're just not thinking they're not you know why are you putting up brown paint in my bathroom yeah. and then why are you uh, anyway well, we're, we're in pretty by the, time, oh, by the time you get to the person painting it it's had to go through so many channels that at that point you're like well at least three people have been involved in this so if that's what he wants that's what he wants yeah, so essentially the like beginning of group. the beginning of today was <laughs> sniffing Prager in a show, telling Sonny go back to bed, uh, not getting the tile I was pumped up about, having a brown and having a brown bathroom, and 
Well, also, it's taupe. People do, sorry, people do <laughs> way too much. They, they do way too much answering without investigating. I get a lot, I, I, I get that a lot. Anyway, all right, so Adam Ray is gonna come in and uh, a few and make us all feel uh, better about ourselves. Um, After Paul Feig just heaped praise on him. That's right. Oh, that's right. Yeah, make sure and, uh, make sure and bring that up. Paul's. Yeah, that's what people are saying behind his back. Um, you want to play a snippet of the uh, audio book since we're on this? Um, I just looked up and realized uh, it's the uh, chapter or the verse on uh, rape on college campuses. And there's all this new talk because they, Betsy DeVos, I guess, the just the liability turned, thing turned back the liability thing that um biden was kind of championing but now biden is in the middle of a thing where he right. said we got to lower that standard you know <laughs> for like, almost everyone <laughs> well it's a it's it, it's a crazy thing i think we have a I'll tape it. i'll get to it saying but it's like here here's what i'm saying everyone be very careful what you talk about because it can come back and, and get you, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about like, so the title nine thing was like, look, women need to be believed. We have to lower the standard. We're not gonna have the due process that we enjoy off campus, let's say, which is, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't think that's a good idea, but either way, uh, if you're gonna champion that and then someone's gonna accuse you, then maybe you don't deserve the the process that you're trying to get trying to do away with or and or it was like 10 minutes ago i felt horrible for bloomberg but remember biden was saying to bloomberg hey just just release the uh oh, dna the just just release them just tell the girls just release them just go and he like D poor bloomberg was like going i don't you know i uh, it's not that easy and i mean he's like what do you mean it's that easy just tell the women just go ahead and tell them they can talk just go ahead and tell them they can talk Oh, we'll play the I'll play the clip of it, but yeah, I it's a weird time to be alive because it's like, all right, well, you can play the clip you have it, or if you don't, you don't have. This is about transparency from the very beginning. Whether it's your health record, whether it's your taxes, whether it's, whether you have cases against you, whether or not people have signed non-disclosure agreements, you think the women, in fact, were ready to say, "I don't want anybody to know about what you did to me." That's not how it works. The way it works is they say, look, this is what you did to me. And the mayor comes along and his attorney say, I will give you this amount of money if you promise you'll never say anything. That's how it works. So he's That's doing that. Works. And then 10 minutes later, someone is going, well, just let us look at the records. The University <laughs> of Delaware. He's like, uh, but that's not how it works. Hey, Joe, like, why do you know how it works so well? <laughs> well, I don't. Here's my whole thing. Everyone is going to protect themselves and everyone wants to get elected and everyone, everyone wants to get along. Everyone wants to win. Everyone wants everything. I get it. I get it. And that's what we're all going to do. And I understand that, but you, that's why you can't accuse other guys of something that may come back to you quickly, which it's the new world order. Mm -hmm. I get it. But we have the, uh, do we have the rape? I'm yes, sorry. we do. This is, the, uh, your very unique and hilarious take on rape on college campuses. Oh, oh boy. And hilarious. <laughs> we'll decide. The folks Irreverent. on the left claim that one in five women, the folks on the left claim that one in five women is raped at college. But you know those lefties are lying. Here's how. Because those same people have started saving accounts to send their 13-year-old girls to rape university, or God forbid, rape state. It's like people saying, 53,000 Americans die yearly of secondhand smoke. It's a lie, but it's a lie for a good cause. Even Biden got in on the action when he was VP, parroting that one in five statistic. Except that stat was gathered from an anonymous online survey at a college campus, and the authors of the study arbitrarily determined what constituted unwanted sexual contact. I thought campuses were the land of safe spaces. I don't understand how the most liberal establishments on the planet are also simultaneously the rapiest places on earth. 
Every left-leaning celebrity in L.A. worries about two issues. Rape culture on college campuses and rising sea levels. Yet they're all shipping their daughters off to college and moving to Malibu. Fortunately, my daughter's a Corolla and probably won't be college material. So I don't have anything to worry about. Unless she does go to college, is as shitty a student as I was, and ends up there for eight years, and thus has a 40% chance of being raped. Shit, now that I think about it, my mom went to L.A. Valley College for like 16 years. So she was probably raped 147 times. Look it up. (laughs) Dawson loves that joke. That's great. Well, do the math. (laughs) <laughs> all right uh rapalicious adam I, ray is coming up there there's nothing your, sorry it, nothing better than adam ray right oh no he's the best uh, to your point uh which is maybe a, a, the most current reference is the same people who are saying this are the same people who are now getting busted for bribing the yeah. university to let their child into that university yeah. they can't pay enough yeah <laughs> yeah i just um it's so counterintuitive to think that that's what's going on in, the, in those kinds of numbers. And, you know, my whole feeling in life in general is there is some danger from secondhand smoke. Let's have the numbers. There's danger of rape on campus, but let's get the real numbers. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's danger of, of everything. But n- unless we're really dealing with the actual numbers, it's going to be hard. Hard to uh, hard to solve that problem. All right, let me hit uh, DC Universe. DC Universe here to save the day, man. Watch DC series movies. Read uh, over twenty two thousand digital comics and connect with uh, other fans like yourself. An engaging and very engaging community forum. Sunny is uh, all over this, by the way. They got an amazing lineup of hit original series, classic series, movies, adult animated series, and much more. Doom Patrol, Titans, Swamp Thing, and more. Harley Quinn. Season two premieres, by the way. That is out. It's been up and running for about about a month now. Get the latest news with a special guest. Watch DC Daily and uh, tune in to their podcast and check that out. It's available on uh, Xbox and Roku and Prime Video and Google Play and just about anywhere. Right, Dawson? Join DC Universe today and get a free seven-day trial plus 15% off your first three months. Visit dcuniverse.com slash hellopod and enter code Adam at checkout. Valid for monthly subscription only. Expires 630.20. All right. The great Adam Ray will be next right after this. Now, Alcoa presents the COVID-19 edition of Definitely Not a Jew on the Adam Carolla Show. Dateline, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. After being told to leave the dining area due to social distancing requirements, an unidentified woman shot and injured four employees of a McDonald's! <laughs> Definitely not a Jew! Adam Ray will be up soon. Uh, you can clean up the screen there, Max Pata, so when he comes up, I'll, I'll know it. Uh, I had, speaking of Adams, I had this thing. I was watching uh, Billy Bush and uh, Extra last night. And uh, I must say uh, this about uh, Billy Bush. He, he brings something to it. He's got a sense of humor. He's uh, likable. Um, oh, so Adam Ray's coming on now yeah, he's a little like, later on. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he, there's a confusion. Some confusion. Confusion. Well, of course there miscommunication. is. miscommunication. <laughs> Classic. Oh, by the way, in between this, I was going on with Chris and Mike August about two confusing subjects simultaneously, calling them back and forth in the middle of this. So it, uh, it's been nothing but confusion. Now, what was Adam? Was it just, and by the way, is there a thing like, like uh, I don't know, a pollen count today? Like, what's today's <laughs> confusion count? Because I won't get out of bed. This is like the ninth su- confusion I've had today, and Our we're not even halfway into it. Extra confusing day. It's, uh, I have 
I have an email I sent confirmation to Adam Ray last night saying to come on 135, right? Mm-hmm. But he said August told him to. And <laughs> so that is that is where the confusion happened. Well, this will then be my third confusing exchange. But it is it is kind of interesting like this does, doesn't this doesn't happen that often. Uh, it happens way more than it should, but mm-hmm. it doesn't happen. It hasn't happened in a while that uh, Mike August has told somebody a different time. Mm-hmm. Um, I know. I, I thought I was able to override it because I have <laughs> I, I created this this email template. I'm sure some of the people and some of the staff have seen it where I I'm the last person they talk to. Uh, uh, when I send the confirmation out. Here's everything you need to know. Let me know if you have any questions. And then, and if you receive this, also let me know that you received it so I, so I know that you saw it. Like, it, it was foolproof. And, and <laughs> Never say that. Yeah, no. Why would, now, I don't, I don't get why Mike would say, well, Mike doesn't. Mike just watches TV and answers emails and says things. Um, all right. So, uh, anyway, well, at least we're on point. I mean, on brand. I mean, I was talking about pure confusion all day, but it does make you ask cosmically, <laughs> why was today, why did so many confusing things mm-hmm. all happen at once today? And then why is our guest not on because of the continued confusion that, that this day already started in. Is this, is this momentum do you, from the earlier confusion? Do you buy into any of the, you know, full moon, new moon, the moon, of, or the, whatever it is, the planets, that guy? I'm, I'm guessing you don't, but do you see, yeah, Mercury, Christy really does. And like, if things start to go wrong like this, you'd be like, Mercury retrograde. I'm like, all right. But I mean, it, it, is it, it's a wild coincidence that this many things would be miscommunicated in a similar way on the same day. Hold on. Let me consult my biorhythm wheel. <laughs> See if I can come up with an answer for you, Brian. Um, You know, Dr. Drew had a saying that Max Paddock could probably look up. That's not his saying, but it's like, I think he used to say something like random events coalesce in a non-random kind of way, which which is to, to say that I've always just said it this way. If you flip a coin a thousand times, it'll be a, about half heads and about half tails, but it'll never just go back right. and forth and back and forth. It's, at some point, you're going to go, my God, this is nine heads in a mm-hmm. row, and you'll be freaking out, kind of wondering why, right. what's going on. But you'd probably be dumb to really dive on that because at some point, when you get to an, the end of a thousand, you'll be about 50 50. Yeah, you just, each, you, which is, you probably just had a nice run, a nice six week run of no confusion. They all just piled up on the same day. Yeah, I, I, but I do also have a, I do, but I do have this theory, which I have um, expressed to uh, Matt, the confused porcelain punisher, many times, which is, Certain things have an energy. Those things, some things are going to be remarkably easy and some things are going to be remarkably difficult. And they start presenting themselves. Like if there can be a project you want to do around your house and it'll, if it starts off tough, like we couldn't get the guy out here and then we finally got the guy out here. But that guy brought the wrong part. So we had to come, we had to reschedule. And the day we had to reschedule, you know, Christy was home alone with Tessa. Mm-hmm. And then right then Tessa got the flu. So she had to rush out right when the guy came in and the guy, she didn't answer the door. So the guy left. Like, I mean, I, I am telling you, and I haven't told this story in a, in a long time, but I'll filibust a little bit here because uh, Adam Ray's 15 minutes out. <clears throat> The one example of this that I really felt is at a certain point, I was doing the radio a little more consistently. I was getting paid 50 bucks a pop from K-Rock. I was getting 80 bucks a pop from like Premier Radio. That's right. Tina knows all about that. Ventura and Van Nuys. I would go in and I would like do my Mr. Burcham segments on, on Kevin and Bean and I'd do 
two a week or three a week and I'd get $150. And then I would take those Bircham bits and kind of tweak them and rewrite them and then go into Premier Radio and record them so they could be syndicated. And it was like, I was doing comedy, but I was getting paid like I was hanging drywall. You know what I mean? Like every five sheets, we'll give you a hundred bucks. You know, like that's what I was doing, but it was with comedy. But in my world, I was selling comedy. Yeah. And, and, and after years of toiling out in the sun and, and cleaning carpets and doing all that stuff, the idea that I was getting $80 and, and also that I could go in and record three Birchums and get $240 and then leave $240 in my former world where I got $15 an hour. That was like two days. And I was in and out of Premier Radio in 90 minutes, you know, like yeah. the, uh, everything got Day's converted day. to by the hour, I was getting paid by the hour. So at a certain point, I said, you know, I can, I think I can get rid of this Zuzu Trooper I'm dragging around in this big old pile of shit truckster thing. And I could get something like a regular car, like a, with a stereo and air conditioning, and I could be like a normal guy. <laughs> and I bought a very used Toyota Supra, like the first generation Toyota Supra. And, and it's really a decent Toyota Supra would have run you 5,500 bucks, but I had 2,900 bucks. <laughs> and so I bought a Toyota Supra that had 200 million miles on it. And I literally proceeded to change the tires, the shocks, the, the, the clutch. Like I, I had to fix every single thing on that car. And at the very end, I went, I want air conditioning. Uh -huh. I have never had air conditioning in an automobile. I have lived in this godforsaken San Fernando Valley my entire life. I've worked construction, I've football practice, carpet cleaning. All, I'm, all I do is swelter. All I do is melt. And then I go home to a red hot apartment or crappy ranch house in the valley and sweat some more. I've never had a truck. I never owned a car that had air. I want air. I have arrived. I've, I'm a working comedian now and I deserve air conditioning. So the first thing I did was like, I'll just fix it myself. I'll, I'll fix this air conditioning. And air conditioning is tricky stuff on a car. And I went down to a place in Van Nuys. I bought, they did rebuilt air conditioning pumps. And I went down and bought that. Then I went and bought a receiver dryer, it's called. It's another component of it. I got under that car. I replaced the air conditioning pump. I replaced the receiver dryer. I got it charged with Freon. And, uh, and I took off. And I remember I took off. And I was picking up my Catholic big brother and I was like, just driving down the freeway. I was like, I'm going to turn that air on. And that blue light came on. I was like, Oh yeah. But I kind of quickly tell that while air was moving, it was the same temperature uh -huh. as the outside air or the cabin air. And I was like, I don't think is it, can I feel it? Is it happening? So I went back and uh, turned out the pump was bad. So I took the pump off again and brought it back to Van Nuys. And I exchanged a pump for another rebuilt pump. And then I took that pump back and I installed that pump. And then I took it back and had it recharged with Freon again. Because every time you open the mm -hmm. system, when you close it, you have to have it recharged. And it didn't work again. And then I found out, I thought the receiver dryer was bad. So I took the receiver dryer back and I bought a new receiver dryer. And then I opened the system, closed the system, and then had to have it shot with a third thing of Freon. And it still didn't work. But by that time, I was actually starting to make a little bit more money. And I just thought it was so symbolic to me. I just thought, I'm going to go to a place. I'm going to do something I've never done. I've been going to pick apart and pulling starters off of old trucks and working on shit in my driveway. There's a place in Van Nuys. It's just called nothing but air conditioning. <laughs> we, we just specialize in air conditioning. That's all we do is air conditioning on cars. That's all we do. And uh, hey, hello. I was like, I, do you guys do? Let me stop you right there. <laughs> <laughs> you guys do smog checks, sir. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, fuck it. I, and I remember at the time I'm going, I know it's going to cost me 650 bucks, which is like a King's ransom to me, but like, I don't care. I want air conditioning. I deserve it. Um, I've arrived. I'm a working comedian. 
and I'm going to do it. And uh, I, I made an appointment and I remember it very well. I, I, I dropped my car off and Jimmy picked me up and we went out to lunch and then he dropped me off of my apartment and the guy said, you know, we'll be done by the end of the day. And uh, you just give us a call at five and then come back and get it or whatever it was. And I called him at five and I was like, I'm ready to pick up my car with my icy air flowing through it. And the guy just went, yeah, we didn't get to it. We didn't work on it. And I was like, why didn't you work on it? We had a whole appointment worked out and everything. And he's like, you didn't leave the keys. Oh my God. So I dropped the car off in their parking lot and instead of handing the keys to them or putting it on the tire i just put it in my pocket i got into jimmy's car we left and of course they couldn't get hold of me i didn't have a cell phone and they probably called my home phone but i wasn't home and then i said to them i go oh so you need the keys huh and they're like yeah uh and while it was in our parking lot somebody hit it <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh Somebody backed into it while I was in the party lot. And I thought, oh, you didn't lead with I that. Thought, God damn it. God damn it. And so I thought, oh, all right, let me come over there and drop the keys off or something. Oh, and wait. So, do, you do you repair bumpers? Yeah, <laughs> sir. Mine. The next, read the sign. The next day, I went over there. I dropped off the keys. I was like, you have the keys, you have the car, you have all the parts you do nothing but air conditioning. You specialize in air conditioning. So when I pick this car up, it's going to be frosty cold air coming out of those vents. And they're like, yes, there is. And I was like, okay, I'll be back. And I remember my dad drove me back. Oh. And um, he dropped me off and I got in the car and I fired it up and I hit that air button. And for the first time, in my life, and this is, at this point, 15 years of driving in the San Fernando Valley, and I'm including all my parents' cars as well, 15 years, frosty air pumping right through those vents. I pay them the 633 bucks or whatever the princely <laughs> sum was for me back then. Uh, I get in the car, and I, and I drive home with the air blowing the whole time. But the whole time, I'm having a bad feeling about it. Like, this is not good. And um, I went out to lunch with my dad shortly thereafter. And we just started talking about sort of like what we're talking about, sort of the cosmic stuff. I just looked at him. And I said, Dad, something's going to happen to that car. I said, it's either going to be stolen or destroyed. I'm gonna, it's either going to be totaled or stolen because it wasn't meant to be. I told him it wasn't meant to be, and I forced it. I forced, cosmically, I forced air into a place it wasn't supposed to be. Maybe I wasn't supposed to have air. I don't know, but that car was not supposed to have it, and it's been a six-month odyssey. It's cost me thousands of dollars, and now that car has air, and it, it's not supposed to be. But I forced it, but it's not over yet. Like, it still has one more move. And I never had a car stolen, and I've never been in a car accident and never had a car hit or destroyed. And in 15 years, I had a couple cars attempt to be stolen, but I had the fuel cutoff switch, so not gone. I never had a car stolen and I never had a car hit or destroyed. Well, except for in the parking lot of the air conditioning place. So I'd never been in an accident, but I still said this car is going to get total. And uh, two days later, I was just standing on my balcony warm night it's probably about midnight and the car was parked directly in front of me on the street in Toluca Lake or around Toluca Lake I was in an apartment building and I was talking to Jimmy on the phone who was in New York at the time with Kevin and Bean and all of a sudden there's this huge crash and uh Jimmy I remember said it was so loud that he could hear it through the phone you know he said whoa what was that and I just very calmly said that was the sound of my car being total and then he started laughing. I remember he was laughing because he thought I was making a joke because I was so matter of fact about it. But in my mind, it, 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 I, I, I want to know what took feet. so long. Yeah, it, was a fait, I, it was a fait accompli. You knew it was going to yeah. happen. Guy in a uh, guy in a F-150 hit that car so hard that the F-150 didn't bounce back into the street. It 
bounced onto the curb and was facing me on the balcony with my car in the middle of the street. It'd been clear. It's not like somebody sideswiped it. Somebody hit it so hard. Anyway, car was utterly to totaled. And, and uh, I don't know how the cosmic stuff works, but <laughs> that car did not want air. Yeah. It got air <laughs> and then it got total. The universe had to correct itself. It had to correct itself. It was shared. Yeah. And of course, somehow in the mix, I needed to be punished. <laughs> I must have been the world's worst person in my last life. Like I must have just, I've just, I must have just killed kids and confused adults. <laughs> there must have been something that I did. It had to be. Couldn't be possibly from what I did in this life. This life, I pay taxes yeah, work and a uh, attempt to be a decent yeah. neighbor. I can't be being, I must be being punished from a former yeah. life where I was a fucking Universe piece of shit. pound of flesh from a previous life. That makes sense. That's, that's right. All right. Now, uh, Adam Ray is on and ready to go. I'm trying to think. Well, why don't we just pot him up and we'll talk to Adam for a few and then he can hang in and do the news with us. Yeah. Hey. Hey, can you hear yeah. us? Hey, man. Up, guys? Where are you? I, um, I'm in Wuhan. I decided to, uh, <laughs> guess what? Uh, Wuhan Air, cheap flights. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The trip was right. planned anyway, so you had to, kind of had to go. Bri, you get it, dude. You, we've all been there where you plan a trip, yeah. you get the kids at grandma's, right? First of all, you find a grandma because yours has been dead for eight years. Mm -hmm. You drop the kids off there and you get the snacks you've got the pre-plane snacks i don't know if you guys like me but when i get my plane snacks ready and i know when i'm gonna smoke the joint before i go through security i want to mm -hmm. time it so that i'm putting those wheat thins and ritz together mm. uh, in my hand and then in my mouth by the time we take off so that the guy next to me is like well you really fucking prepped for this wuhan trip <laughs> didn't you and then i go drink five jared because i told you the guy next to me was gonna say you really plan for this wuhan trip <laughs> so there's a lot going into it i guess what i'm trying to say is the weather's nice. Uh, not a lot of people here, um, but there's plenty of bats. Well, last time we talked to you, you were in, in Arizona in your mom's yeah. backyard. Totally. Uh, girlfriend's mom's backyard. Girlfriend's uh, mom's. Classic, huh? Classic quarantine move. But now I'm actually up in Seattle um, in my, uh, my mom's backyard. Well, it looks uh, beautiful. Which is the name of, which is the name of my uh, stand-up special. Um, this the, is uh, where a I lot wanna... of things happen. A lot I should plug up in this backyard. First hand job, first uh the backyard. Yeah, for sure. First uh but before there was like a full on like once my mom and George, shout out to George who just came in and and wanted to say hi to you and I go, George, you guys had one hang. Like you got to ease into the <laughs> friendship, dude. Like you can't just be popping into zooms. It's like, I really I got some I got a cool car story. I was like we don't got time. <laughs> we, even post quarantine, we don't got time. Dude, Wait this till is you live to again. tape. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, George stepdad, we hung out and uh, he loves Pebble you, Beach, and uh, tells all it takes is one stepdad Pebble Beach hang to really fortify. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you can tell, and maybe we can up Chris's volume. Or sorry, Chris, you can up Adam's volume oh, just yeah, a little can, bit if yeah, we can, can turn it, up yeah. a little. Um, I will say this. Somebody said to me, do you think uh, the race at uh, the, the race at Laguna Seca is on this year? Yeah. And I said, I think it's on because they sent me an invoice this morning asking for money for the actual entrance fee to the race. Whoa. So they think this race is mm -hmm. on. So and it kind of makes sense. All the other stuff is canceled. You right. can. Uh, uh, tell step pops, but the race oh, well. is is on. And if uh, well, I think you guys want to come down, oh, yeah, a thousand percent, yeah. It, um, but yeah. So it's uh, I'm I'm up here in Seattle for I'm driving back down to Oregon tonight um, to be with my uh, my real dad. And you know you got to balance out that real stepdad balance. It's a tough balance. I don't know if you guys, you know, it's like how much time do you give to to not real dad, you know what I'm saying? But then you don't want to leave real dad out in the. Out yeah. In the, uh, well, let shadows. me ask you this. I have a couple of step parents as well. Yeah. I don't spread that evenly. Zero hours. Zero, zero. All of them. But <laughs> that's, yeah, it's easy it move. is. But, but here's an interesting thing. If I call my dad, my stepmom always answers the phone. And then I don't want to say, can I speak to dad? I, and I don't want to say, can I speak to Jim? 
because right. that feels weird. I say, can I speak to my dad? Which now right. it all sounds bad to me, but what's mm -hmm. your technique? Um, well, I, you know, I, I, I've introduced him as my dad because he's the first time George actually was like, this is my son. I, my instinct was to correct him and be like, step, you know, <laughs> you, right. didn't, you didn't make me bitch, but, uh, you didn't make me bitch. Isn't the best thing to say at his daughter's wedding. I get right. it. Uh, <laughs> But, but uh, you know, he, I think once he, once he bought me a laptop for college, I was like, I think that's, that's a, that's real dad. You know, that's dad move. Yeah. That's big dad, dad move. Shit. Yeah. Also, I was like, you can't buy my love. He was like, it's Adele. I was like, all right. Well, <laughs> this Speaking year, of Adele, okay. Adele's lost like 125 pounds. <laughs> Adele. Right. Um, well, I was looking for a way to segue into a weight loss uh, <laughs> pop star uh uh, yeah. conversation and that was it yeah she really has she took the uh the ron funches approach what was the ron funches approach i was hoping you knew the answer to that uh, uh <laughs> it uh no he uh i think just you know he got a trainer he was on an nbc sitcom oh yeah well had i thought this uh you know joke through it would be to uh get bill lawrence to put you on a sitcom on nbc um and have your wheezing be so audible that it was distracting <laughs> that Bill hires a trainer for you. Oh, right. So if Adele could just, yeah, I don't know if she did that. I don't know if Bill Lawrence is responsible for Funches and Adele's weight loss, but if I were him, I would call up Quiznos and be like, hey, I got the new Jared for you, and he doesn't fuck kids. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, um, I'll, I've, I've always had this theory, yeah. and I'm 100% I'm down with this my own theory, but I really do mean it. It's a, a curse. It's the Kirsty Alley syndrome. Adele has it as Great well. band name, by the way, the Kirsty Alley syndrome. <laughs> Some people put on weight and their face never shows it. Yeah. Adele had this beautiful Chisel. defined cleft in the chin face, even though her body was big. And, and so did Kirsty Alley. And so, her face, she's down 100 pounds. Her face looks about the same. Wow. Now, Kirstie Alley had the same thing. And so when you go on TV or you walk down the red carpet or you see yourself on The Tonight Show or any late night show, whatever, when you put on weight, the first thing you do is you go, oh, man, I could see it. You yeah. can see it in your face. You sit down and your face looks big. If your face never looks big, you just get a bigger <laughs> gown and no one knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why Adele was able to balloon up without really caring because you just see those pictures and she'd put her face on the album cover and you go, oh, look at her. <laughs> yeah, She's yeah, yeah. gorgeous. She truly, uh, I mean, that's a transformation. That's now Kirstie Alley had, what was it Jenny Craig or Weight Watchers? Mm. She had the help of some sort, some sort of pre-packaged, pre-portioned right. like Salisbury steak, broccoli, <laughs> tiny replacement chocolate cake uh, benefit. But I don't know what Adele, I'd be curious to know because that's a big, I mean, she looks like a different person. Now, do, uh, here's my question. Mm. Are people going to go the same way with Jonah Hill where they're like, you know, it's not as funny. <laughs> Are they going to be like, yeah. yeah, this album wasn't as uh, funny. It lost some soul, you know. It, you lost a couple extra. Some half. You, know, you know when you do that vibrato and the 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 gobbler just jiggles a little bit more in the wind, like maybe yeah, maybe you lose some of that. I don't know. No, I it's it's true. I heard somebody talking about this, and I think they brought up maybe it was Luther or Vandross or some guy, yeah. but there was some soul singer who did yo-yo a lot, like. Uh, it's funny when you say yo yo about a black guy. Yo yo. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Maybe just emphasize the second yo harder. Yeah. Oh, you have uh, to. <laughs> but Luther would be big and fat and then drop the weight and then big and fat again. But I think his voice was still pretty magnificent right. uh, straight through. So do not worry, Adele. We have Luther By the way, Andros. Uh, uh, the one, my one uh, concern being outside, because this is my first outside anything, Zoom, pod, you, you name it. And uh, enjoying it, except for uh, my, George, the most non-confrontational dude you'll meet, uh, told me about how their neighbors, he started like extending, right now he's out there building a bunch of shit and he's carrying around wood and, you know, he's 76. So I'm like, dude, easy with that. He's like, I got it. He's like, as long as I'm up, I'm living. And I'm like, all right, I don't know what, 
Panda Express fortune cookie you pulled that from, but <laughs> I definitely agree with it. And so he told me, though, in building his shed, I love a good neighbor fight. And, and mm -hmm. Ad, you can probably yeah. speak to this better than anyone. Uh, but I, I, I love when he tells me that his neighbors got mad because they said his shed, it's a fucking, you know, Tim Taylor trying to build some shit. He's not trying to change the world. He's trying to retire, be retired, build some shit, get away from my mom from time to time before they get together and watch the news. And the neighbor goes, hey, your shed is too close to the fence. And it's, it's getting, like, I can see it, and it's too close to the fence, and it feels like it's peering over my fence, which yeah. is the most insane thing I've ever heard because, A, this couple is never in the backyard. You can attest this. Come over here real quick. <laughs> I will. Look, George, just pop I, in. Will you tell me? I've had oh, yeah, many a run-in with a neighbor, and okay. there, there, there are no fair-minded, intermediate, sort of even-keeled middle neighbors. There's You never talk to them, neighbor, and then there's what is going on in your yard, neighbor. There's just – they there, there are neighbors, yeah. and I've had – Many of these neighbors, which is you are doing something in your yeah. yard and you didn't consult me. <laughs> mm. That's really yeah. what they're, that's, it's, right. that's their yes. bottom line yes. wiring. You can call it anything you want, but the bottom line, the, 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 the gestalt of their, what they're saying is, is how come you're doing something and I was not, I, it was not presented yeah. to me. What, what is going on that you're doing? <laughs> yeah. And in your mind, you're building a fucking shed on your property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In their mind, you want to open a water park <laughs> in their entry hall, <laughs> and they've just come home yeah. from the market, and they want to know what's going yeah. on. Jew, a Jews-only water park. That's and right. like, dude, <laughs> we just moved neighborhoods and thought we solved this problem. George, come here real quick in one word. Tell me how you like those neighbors to your left. Into this mic. If he, if he down, farts in the mic, so I'll give him 10 downs. <laughs> really good. Really good. Oh, God. Oh, that's, PC. That's good. Get out of here. All right. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it's ha happened to me so many times where you're, just, you're doing something and they're just, they just show up and they want to know what is going on. I, I've never understood it. And it's, but I think you know what it is, too? It's, there's the, a gym down here where they live that's uh, also mostly um, you know, uh, retired uh, peeps. And... Uh, and there's always the same clientele of people working out, which I enjoy every time I come home. But I was on the phone once, and there's one of these signs up in the uh, elliptical room, and it says, no talking on the cell phone, which, again, is like, I get that, like working out. By the way, in this day and age, everyone's got headphones on when they're working right. out. Even people that are 80 that are pumping away on the treadmill, almost like there's a guy there that runs on the treadmill. Every time I come home and, go, and decide to go to the gym, he's there pumping away, almost like this guy wants to – die on the treadmill you know what i'm saying he almost, he's running in a fashion to where he's either running from some demons or he's like dude i'm gonna see if i can just die on this thing and be the first guy to die on a treadmill in edmonds washington but uh the sign says no cell phones i take out my phone it's a kind of an important i'm already being a dick because it's probably something hollywood oriented so i'm like yeah yeah no make the deal we can't get another one thousand dollars well then you tell john but you to fucking eat a dick you know a classic <laughs> hollywood chat i'm in the branding department and so this guy comes over and he goes, hey, you see the sign? And I take out my headphone and go, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's a real quick call. I just got to take care of this. He goes, you can't talk on the cell phone. And I was like, I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I really, so then I start, you know, getting real quiet. Uh, manager of the gym, two minutes Aww. later, comes up, taps me on my thing, goes, get off the machine, walks me over to, like, another space in the Pri he private like, area. He <laughs> doesn't even let me stay. Takes me over to the sit-up section. And he's just it's like, it's a... Uh, we got some rules here. The cell phone. I, I know that you were asked already by, uh, by uh, you know, someone who works out here and you still are on the phone. By a snitch. That's exactly what I said, Gene. I go, yeah, I go, I didn't know we had adult tattletales at the gym. I go, I thought yeah. you guys outlawed those. He's like, dude, the rules are the rules. I'm like, dude, it, I'm off the phone now. Like, what are you? And, and everyone's on their headphones. The guy who was telling me to get off my phone was on his headphones. So I'm like, how could he hear me? Which, you know, maybe that's – is hearing it, is that good? Maybe we should – I don't know. So, it, uh, here's, again, it's a thing, just getting upset about things that don't matter, yes. right? Um, having the person who walks past you on the street yell at you for not having a mask on now. We've now well, fucking that. super sized all the fucking snitches. We're literally having commercials where the mayor is telling 
asking people to snitch. Snitches oh, get yeah, rewards. People. So what we're said, so right, and the, we've already we're already at DefCon Five in the snitch department. Right. Also, it, it it it's unbelievable. See, in my world, the way I'm wired, the Gestapo guard that pulled Anne Frank out of her attic and threw her in Auschwitz is not nearly as bad as the concerned mm -hmm. citizen who said, hey, I saw some candlelight up in that attic like two nights in a row yeah. and the silhouette of a 13-year-old girl. You better check it out. That yeah. person is 10 times worse than the Gestapo guy who actually banged yeah. on the door. He's worse. He's worse because the Gestapo guy's just doing his job <laughs> as horrible as it is. Yeah. That's his yeah. gig. That's his gig. The, the manager at the gym it has to go yeah. talk to you because yeah. somebody told you to do. You know, the cops have to show up at your house because the neighbor said the stereo was too totally. loud, even when it wasn't. It's like, in a way, I always blame the snitches more than the people. A thousand percent. It. You know, the last flight I took, I had a tuna sandwich Aww. I brought on, and there was a woman in front of me, and she, I know Come already on, the story. I'm the fucking, I know. Guess what, dude? I was talking about pre-planned flight foods, and this one I did not plan for. And, uh, and I got this sandwich. I'm starving. I'm in the middle seat. This uh, older British gal in front of me <clears throat> keeps turning around. She's got her mask on. She's like, she's like, oh, my God. That was her opening line. She just goes, <laughs> oh. She goes like this. Oh, my God. And I was like, did you shit your pants? What happened? And she's like, oh, God, is that you? By the way, how did she, like, I mean, I guess I was chowing down on a pretty you know, swiftly. And she's Voracious. like, oh, that sandwich. Of, yeah, she's just like, that's a way better word. She's like, oh, that smells awful. She goes, are you going to be eating that the whole flight? And I was like, I mean, I fucking planned <laughs> on it. I bought it with $72 at the, at the you know, uh, <laughs> Hudson's. Yeah, you're in the middle of like a mouse. Like, <laughs> Dude, I was, yeah. And she goes, oh my God. I go, yeah. I go, I go, I mean, it's all I got. She goes, can you, and then she, so then I take a couple bites. Then she turns back around two minutes later and goes, are you done? I go, <laughs> wow. I go, I go, I think I'm, I'm going to probably take a few bites, put it down, pick it up, take a few more bites. Just, oh, please, can you put it in the overhead compartment and get something else? I'm trying to, you know, suggest oh other foods. Wow. Then call button. <laughs> no. Uh, swear to God, a flight attendant comes over, and this is exactly what you're talking about, Ad, where sometimes the messengers is like, it's their job. They don't care. She comes over. At this point, I know what's happening, but I got my headphones on, so I'm just kind of eating my, my business. And all of a sudden, I see the flight attendant in my periff just go. Waving. And I, and I go, yeah, what, what's going on? And he goes, um, are you is, eating that tuna sandwich, right? And I go, yeah, it's delicious. <laughs> I go, you want some? And he kind of smirks, and he goes, it, it's, it, I guess it's real stinky. <laughs> he's just, like, not wanting to be <laughs> the fucking sandwich police, but he's like, is it, are you almost done? Like, he's like, you could tell this guy was like, fuck, this yeah. is not what I signed up for with Delta Airlines. They didn't tell me to patrol <laughs> the tuna smells coming from coach. Hey, and Brian, so, uh, sorry. Hey. Yeah. I was going to say, Brian, you play the role of the <laughs> flight attendant. You come up to me and you ask me if I'm eating a tuna fish sandwich. <laughs> okay. I'll be Adam Ray. And here's the answer you should have given Adam Ray. <laughs> Um, sir, I, uh, I have to, I have to ask you, um, is that a tuna fish sandwich you're eating? No, there? actually it's peanut butter and jelly. The bitch in front of me just queefed. Oh, um, okay. Have a nice flight. Okay. <laughs> oh, I wish Sweet. George was here for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That is I want awesome. to talk about I Adam's, know. uh, movie, the, uh, Bellman, which is, uh, available May 8th coming up, uh, when is that? The day after tomorrow? That's, That's tomorrow, tomorrow. It is tomorrow. Available yeah, tomorrow. People, Sorry. As people hear, this is right now. Right. Get going on uh, Amazon. Wait a minute. You can pre-order it on iTunes yeah. now, but Amazon tomorrow. Um, yeah, it's me, Tom Lennon, Richard Kind, Willie Garson, John Kites, Kellen Coleman. It's, it's a funny um, movie. Adam is the leading man in this movie, and... Uh, Finally. Lennon is always great. Kite, Jonathan Kite is great. We've had him on our show oh, a few yeah. times oh, as, yeah. as well. And uh, Adam, like, is a love interest, leading man, like, funny, but uh, very likable. The movie's low-key, but funny low-key. Totally. And a lot of really good performances. And uh, congratulations. Thanks, I appreciate you guys checking it out and, uh, and telling people to see it. 
yeah, I mean, it, it's got a little like wet hot American summer vibe, little, uh, you know, little, uh, little, little anchorman, little, uh, you know, there's some Van Wilder traits to like my character as far as this guy who's been stuck at this hotel for a while and kind of never really moving up in the, uh, you know, in the business of, of hotels. And then his girl kind of notices that and lets her get away. And then he lies about a promotion. And Thomas Lennon plays this spiritual guru that's trying to take over the hotel basically and, and turn it into a casino. And he's trying to con everybody that's staying there. And he cons some of my bellmen because I'm like the head bellman. So I've, it's like this guy that doesn't want to move up in the ranks because he likes where he's at. He's real comfy. He's got all these guys below him that that kind of, um, you know, look up to him as a god. And uh, yeah, it's sweet. It's It's got some fun lines. A lot of my improvs they kept in there. There's oh. one line where there's an older, older uh, castmate. Like improvising with Tom Lennon, by the way, is like a fucking dream. He like, is great. He's just so good. And he's so, you know, I've, you know, the state, was one of the, you know, and Living Color was, I'd say, the first piece of sketch that truly, even more so than SNL, just caught my, my eye, probably because it was like, they had pre-taped things and it, was, it wasn't it was live. So like the fact that they had shit memorized and got into these characters more was just way more appealing to me. And and the cat, it was just so raw too, obviously. But, um, uh, but the state and Tom Lennon, when I was in high school, that's when I really, and was starting to kind of find comedy more as a, as a lane was just kind of overwhelming and and to see how many things he's popped up in it and obviously how much improv they do in Reno 911 and so to be across from him and and to have the first kind of long run that we had together back and forth which is kind of the end of the movie uh where I'm trying to you know bust up his his game uh was so great making each other laugh and uh yeah sweet guy sweet guy great gives great back rubs in between mm. takes that's one thing that a lot of a a list stars don't do well well you know uh, he's a Kate Blanchett does he's it. a real a real talented yeah. guy and uh always you can tell he has great improv chops because whenever he pops up on TMZ he's always just locked and loaded isn't that a and great gauge for how <laughs> like I start using that too I'm like was the guy funny on TMZ because that is the true <laughs> is, impromptu is he to play hey ball? <laughs> totally yeah because when you see those comics that don't give a funny answer on tmz i'm like a wasted opportunity like if you're famous enough quite a few people are gonna see that but you know it's also it doesn't matter so just uh, say whatever. i'll tell you the ultimate slap in the face from tmz which they will do about every fifth person and they jump is they jump the comedian the actor the whomever the cameraman asks them a question and then they cut to the room and they spend their whole time answering the question in the room. And then they cut back to the guy in the street and they go, but on. And it's like, wow, you didn't take any of this person's answer. You just used it to lead to a discussion with amongst yourselves, which means whatever came out of that person's mouth wasn't entertaining or funny. Right. Well, I'd probably uh, say the, yes. the worst TMZ uh, uh, moment I've ever had. Okay. I think I was coming out of Toast on Third in Beverly. No, Have you been doctor. To that restaurant? Can we Toast? call you Phil or Doc Phil or Doctor Phil or? I'm going DP these days. Oh. DP, DP, Dr. which a lot of people what? listening are like, oh, double penetration. No, I'm talking Doctor Phil. Okay, oh. I was the original DP before Double Penny. Oh, right. Which double Penny also sounds like something you get at the Olive Garden, but I digress. I was caught outside of Toast, and they said Phil. I said DP. They go whatever. Uh, what is your take on kids of divorce? And I said, well, I think the best way, okay, to overcome that as a child, if you've seen your mother or father uh, and or both, uh, you know, uh, separate from the household, the best thing to do for you and for them is to hire one of your high school teachers to, to come over and, and, uh, and, and perform fellatio on, uh, your, on your parental uh, guardian and as to help them get over uh, the lack of dual companionship in their life and they shut the cameras off the moment I started talking and started walking away from me but that was for me the worst TMZ moment I've ever had we'll be right back <laughs> <laughs> all right let's take a break we'll come back we'll do the news with uh, Adam Ray right after this news with Gino Grad breaking viral all those crazy Trump tweets. Give me news with Gina Grad. Trouble in the Middle East. Celebrity drug meltdown. See news with Gina, Gina Grad. 
the news with Gina Grad. Well, speaking of TMZ, let's just start things off with some piping hot TMZ gossip. A married NFL player broke quarantine on Easter Sunday to join his brother for a sex orgy. Oh, yeah. This was reported by TMZ, the sort Hold of on. Fair- Yes. I will play this game. Definitely not a punter. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's uh, from you Adam's uh, the, Adam no. uh, Ray. You know who this is? Uh oh, Seattle no. former Seattle great Earl Thomas. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah Baltimore uh, Ravens. Uh, so based on the police report, his wife caught him in bed with other women. Earl and Nina Thomas argued on e- on Easter. He bolted from the house. She hacked into his Snapchat ID to ID his location, <laughs> discovered he'd arranged a hookup with random women. She surprised her husband at the nearby Airbnb, held a loaded nine millimeter Beretta to his head. She also pointed the gun toward the naked women in bed and yelled, I got something for you all, hoes. Get that Austin, drop. <laughs> Austin, Texas police arrested Nina at four in the morning for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Uh, Wednesday night, learning that TMZ would publish the story, Thomas asked for prayers on his Instagram. You know, I don't like to, uh, yeah, Earl the Pearl Jam, Thomas. Um, I don't like to s- speak well of the black community. You know that. But I will, I will compliment the uh, women of the black community, oh, which is... When you catch your man cheating, you are equally pissed at your man, but also at the hose he's been banging around with. Right. I feel like in the Anglo community and especially the Jewish community, they're a little less focused on the hose and a little more on uh, Shlomo's who'd been <laughs> fucking around. Like, if I get caught cheating, Lynette will have little to no interest on who I was fucking. She'll focus all the attention on me and why. Right. Right. See what I'm saying? And I, I yeah. feel that's, I feel that's a more true in the white community. In the black community, I feel like they spread it around. I think you're 100 percent right. The only exception being, I think there's a white trash exception where it's like, oh, get yeah. your, get a good away from my man. It's like that, that too. Your man, yeah. it's all yours. They got a little, a little Tammy Wynette country kind of <laughs> right, vibe right. that would work that you, way. But in in general, yes. And apparently there was like, <clears throat> so I found out about this story late last night because my brother-in-law Tim, uh, or as the rap community knows him, Dirte, um, told me around the fire pit that I. Uh, purchase for my sis and, and bro-in-law while I've been in town to sit around and get out of the house and maybe lighten up some of the depression that's going on. Um, we're sitting there, and my brother-in-law, by the way, as we're making s'mores with my two 10-year-old nieces and five-year-old nephew, brother-in-law has no regard for real. I mean, the amount of time, if I had a dollar for every time I've said, hey, Dirte, you might, you might lighten up on the F-bombs around Christmas around the kiddos. <laughs> uh, I'd have at least 60 bucks. So, we're sitting there and he just pulls up his phone. And he goes, bro, you hear about Earl Thomas? And I go, no, keep in mind, kids to my right and left. He goes, this motherfucker, his <laughs> wife comes over. Apparently he's fucking some broad. She pulls the, the hoe he's fucking comes over with a gun, puts it to Earl's head, starts fucking going crazy. Like, like this bitch says she's going to kill him. This broad is fucking out of her mind. Earl Thomas is like, get the fuck out. And this shit was crazy. Dude, it's going to be on TMZ tomorrow. To which I say, hey, Tim, uh, kiddos. And then I go, kiddos, forget everything you just heard. To which Dirt Day says, and I quote, bro, they're in marshmallow land. (laughs) (laughs) And then I was really waiting for him to be like, watch. Hey, Jackson, fuck you. See, he didn't hear me. (laughs) <laughs> hey girls you're not mine you see they didn't hear shit man you know like i'm i'm gonna also make make an excuse for earl possibly which is i remember talking to uh thomas hollywood henderson oh, nice. of the dallas cowboys outside linebacker kind of guy could have been maybe the next lawrence uh taylor but he got caught up in drugs and whatever else but he was explaining to me that when he was parting, oh, was I talking to him about this? No, it was an article I read. I later on was talking to him about something else, but an article I read. He basically said it after they won the Super Bowl, him and Ed Too Tall Jones. And if you find a picture of Ed Too Tall Jones, that was a lot of man. And Ed Too Tall Jones was probably 6'8", 6'9", playing in the 70s. 
in the NFL and was That's a big tall. dude That's too. too he was playing <laughs> far too play tall. Def- played defensive end and he wasn't you know he wasn't jason taylor skinny he was a big dude it was six eight or he was called too tall but it anyway. wasn't ed just right jones it was ed no. too tall jones <laughs> too tall jones and he was just basically explaining that when they traveled and they banged groupies or prostitutes ed needed two chicks yeah. like he was saying like ed needs two chicks like you'd say, like you'd say, like Andre the Giant couldn't take a bath in a regular sized tub, and you'd go like, oh yeah, I get it. He's he's Andre the Giant. Like Ed, too tall, so big that he didn't. That guy needed two hosts. Right? Uh. So I don't know. Maybe maybe we should cut these world class athletes a little slack when it comes to the orgies. You know what I mean? Maybe they just need more than we need. You know, Garagos could use someone like you on his team. How big is Ed, too tall, Jones? The women. And did do his wang, which you would do with a bat when you were trying to figure out who got to bat first. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, which team would get up first? I mean, there, we see a picture of him over Dieter Brock. He's far think, too You strange. know, circa 1981 or whatever. But huge. He's a huge dude. Back back when the average defensive lineman went six two and a half, he was six eight and a half or something. Wow. Uh, all right. Sorry. Oh, six nine. Poof. All right. Six nine, yeah. Uh, so that's kind of, and he was a defensive end. I mean, that's pretty. I'm trying to think of like how big they are nowadays. That's, I mean, a defensive end maybe not not bigger than that. Yeah, no. Wow. Yeah, I, I think Earl Thomas is. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I'm just gonna say, I, I think uh, I, I did see his Instagram. Did you guys see his video where he was just like, last night he was like, I'm about to be on TMZ, but I want to nip it in the bud first. And he's like, some shit went down. And then, like, you know, you're going to hear about it tomorrow, but I want to get to it first. Some shit went down between me and me and my wife, but it's none of your business. So <laughs> later, it's like, all right, well, you didn't really nip it in the butt. Get yeah, ahead of say, it. I just, I'm intrigued, if anything. <laughs> yeah. He was like, I just want to speak on I thought he was going to, like, give the whole lowdown and kind of truly do what anyone who gets publicly, you know, uh, blown up like that would like to do is kind of get the first take. But he, uh, I guess he just. Unhelpful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I do you I don't have real feelings about anybody who does anything outside of their job unless they hurt somebody. Right. Or if they've been on a tear or a campaign to try to get you know, if if, if Earl was trying to get other teammates fired because they had extramarital <laughs> affairs, then I'm like, fuck you, brother. Now you got busted. Fine. But remember but, the twist in this is he's the victim. Wait, because the wife right. is the one that held a gun to his head. Did I imagine oh, right. this, or oh, or was it reported that he or did Gina say this and I blank out? It was him and his brother his who brother. were having the yeah. okay, okay, right. Make sure that, um, that either clear. either way, um, no. It, as long as there's no victims per se, I'm not I'm not interested. And also, totally. what you guys feel about uh, you know NF fell superstars like i'm kind of surprised when they're not having orgies mm-hmm. <laughs> that's yeah me. tell me that's part and parcel yeah. right well donald trump wants the border wall painted and it could cost a lot of money according to the government contracting uh, estimates obtained by the washington post uh painting it black which is what he wants to do could add 500 million more dollars to the project trump has gone back and forth on having the steel beams painted black and at one point he talked about it uh but now he's once again pushing for it claiming that the dark color will make it look more foreboding what do you think's gonna paint it (laughs) (laughs) and uh and uh, it'll help it'll become too hot to the touch when uh you know if somebody tries to scale it during a meeting last month at the white house we need to do we need to uh on our side of the wall needs to have a, a mural of drug cartel guys <laughs> sitting in SUVs with M16s so no one on our side gets that close to the wall. Their side of the wall needs those fake train tunnels that Wiley Coyote would paint <laughs> on the side of the mountain. So instead of showing up with ladders, they yeah. just get a running start and just smack right into the wall. See what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So Oh, totally. Trump yeah. had any brains at all, he'd be listening to me. On <laughs> Trump could really use you on his yes. team because uh, Jared Kushner, who's his advisor, he told him to move, move ahead with the paint job. Oh, great. What is it? I don't get that there's black steel. You're saying like steel girders mm-hmm. and those girders are every X amount of feet. And then 
there must be, it must be modular. Like, here's what I'm saying. There, there must be building this wall. They're not building it all on site. It has to be modular because mm -hmm. you can never cover this much right. ground if you just kind of stack cinder blocks. You, they must be putting a vertical post every 31 feet, and then they must drop in the barrier okay. in between those. So he's just talking about the post. Like, well, I, that's I got to that, see a picture of yeah, it. Yeah. If, if there is one, that would be great because this says Trump has gone back and forth on having the steel beams painted black. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't, I don't know why, what, I don't know what, what message does that send? Also, they get super hot stuff you paint. That's you what paint he wants. Steel black and you put it a, that's part of the point. Oh, oh is they, that it? Did are they horizontal? Are they horizontal beams? Well, I don't no, know. No, no. Wait, says, a, wait a second. Wait a second. Did you say anything about? Yeah. Heat? Yes. Yeah. Oh. It says um, uh, it, it to look more forbidding and will help the wall become too hot to touch when temperatures rise in the summer. Oh, did you say that part? Because mm -hmm. my phone got my name. Yeah. Was, it, maybe maybe it's got cut off. Very possible. We oh. Froze. Well, yeah. Okay, that part makes sense. Then, if you have people shimmy up the post and they're super hot because they're painted black and in the sun and conducting heat, then that would make a difference. Although the people put gloves on or oven mittens and, and figure <laughs> it out. By the way, anyone who wants to come to this country wearing two oven mittens, you're yep. in. You can stay at my place. Scones <laughs> for everyone. <laughs> nice. AYO <laughs> mittens. That's right. <laughs> So a lot of pirates in the news for uh, very real reasons. According to a new study, pirates, like actual pirates on the open sea, are getting very active lately. Oh Over the last three months, there's been a 24% increase in pirate attacks and attempted attacks compared to the same period last year. The researchers are worried that the things are going to get worse before they get better because governments are so concerned with coronavirus problems, they won't be able to spend resources on keeping pirate attacks under control. Imagine I was also thinking that aren't there a lot of ships kind of hanging around sort of at sea not able to uh you know disembark or get their cargo off get the oil out i think um imagine how depressing the ride from disneyland the pirates of the caribbean would be <laughs> if they just replaced every animatronic and fake pirate with what is yeah. today a real tom pirate. hanks and the ethiopians yeah, just yeah. all They're Somali, Somali soup, super oh, skinny were they? Somali. Somali, I sorry. Yeah, Somali, like 17 year old teenagers just standing there and cut off. Like, how depressing would that be? I am the captain now. Yeah, that's right. No Johnny Depp in sight. So some of you may have noticed this. I don't know if you're in the focus group or not on Twitter, but Twitter's trying out this new feature that lets users think twice about posting a message with foul language before it goes out to <laughs> the world. Replies to tweets with curse words will now sometimes come with a prompt asking if that's what you really want to say. I think we have a picture of it. It says, when things get heated, you may say some things you don't mean. To let you rethink a reply, we're running a limited experiment on iOS with a prompt that gives you the option to revise your reply before it's published if it uses language that could be harmful. Wow. Yeah, yeah I've definitely, I could use this. The amount of times that I've started to reply, uh, A, at my pillow. This thing feels like sleeping on a fucking foot under the freeway. I want my money back. And then I go, look, maybe I'm just pandemic panicky. Maybe I'm a little too high. You know, maybe, maybe it's on me. Everything's maybe on the not, table. Yeah, maybe I'm not sleeping on it the right way. Maybe it's like there's, you know, I got to read the manual. But um, this sounds like, look, the amount of people that do late night just beef brigades, I think it's probably, <laughs> I think it's the beef probably. Shortage. The beef, sh <laughs> we got a shortage of beef, not online. <laughs> I, I think it's good. Twitter. I think it's good not because it's hurtful or harmful or whatever fall. I think you can, in the heat of battle, fire out shit that is a little beneath you and it lets mm -hmm. you kind of govern yourself. That mm -hmm. uh, right. kind of thing that uh, I, I, I have it in the book and it's something we talked about once or twice, but if you guys could kind of picture when shit goes down, picture it as a fly that lands on your nose. And 
you have two full peach cobbler pies in each hand. Mm. And if you go for the fly, you're going to end up just smashing a pie in your own face. Sure. But if you can count to a five Mississippi, the fly will fly away and you won't have to essentially mm. pie yourself. And I and sort of, yeah. If, just to add to that scenario, if you're going for your nose with a pie in your hand, that fly has gone before you even hurt yourself. True. <laughs> yeah. And you get nothing but pie. All right, let's do one more, Gina Grant. You got it. Well, a uh, let okay. So we have some video for this. Police say a 25-year-old Austin man was charged with attempted assault on a public service worker after a video posted on social media showed a city park ranger getting shoved into the water when he, when he asked people to keep a six-foot distance for social distancing. Brandon Hicks faces a charge of attempted assault on a public servant, a state jail felony, uh, by the way. And according to an arrest affidavit, the ranger, Cassidy Stillwell, was talking to the group. Uh, they were drinking, they were smoking, and, um, you know, he's just kind of trying to ask them to chill a little bit, and this is what happened. And we have a video. I got you, man. Got Bet. you. So, uh, we can <laughs> oh! Pushed him into the water. They both, go in? they both went in, but the other guy had swim trunks on. Now, the officer who submitted the affidavit said the ranger could have struck his head, he could have really hurt himself, he could have been unconscious. Uh, Hicks's lawyer says he's out on $7,500 bond and his next court date's in June. A person found guilty of this could face six months to two years in jail. You know, if I was a guy who pushed him in, uh, that guy pushed him in, probably pushed him in, and then two seconds later realized, oh, he just fucked up big time. Uh -huh. He was like running away. And that's why I always have a polo chambered. So if I ever push a guy into a body of water, he's uniformed, and I mm -hmm. run away and I regret it, I'll yell, polo! And then later on, when we're in court. <laughs> oh my God. I can go, That's oh, I totally second. misunderstood what was happening. I, yeah. I was young. I was, that was a fish out of water situation. Yeah. yeah, you're like, the way I grew up, this is how we played the game. Look, <laughs> right. some people, everyone plays these games differently. Some people play when it's Uno, you have to show that you have one card before you can accuse someone of only having one. I play right. Marco Polo, you push the guy in, you run away. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, I think. Um, I, the the guy, by the way, do you see the picture of this guy? He looks like if if Broadway did a musical version of Scooby Doo, this guy would play Shaggy, or a guy if the story was like them doing a a play about the making of Scooby Doo, this guy would be one of the extras auditioning for the role of Shaggy. Yes, who has like like one line, like he's in there and they're like, all right, so um, there he is. They go, all right, so um, you're uh, you're you, you're with Scooby. You guys are about to find the White Claw Killer, and uh, and you um, you say Zoic Scoob. Good thing we got the Scooby Snacks. Uh, okay, and then when do I push the Park Ranger in the lake? I think it's gonna be a no, dude. I think we're gonna we're Please gonna go in a different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Adam Ray, do you have this entirely uh, written out as a full musical? Well, I you know Adam doesn't, but look, for the longest time I've been trying to pitch six different musicals. Okay. Tony. One, yeah, look, it's one, the Tony Danza story, how Danza can you get? Uh, the second is, uh, you know, a kind of a take on 13 going on 30 with Jennifer Garner, but it's 12 going on 56. You know, it's a little more of a, um, less of a rom-com, more of a take Die Hard meets, uh, meets Shanghai Noon. The third musical is, uh, is, you know, it's about uh, Judith Light and kind of her struggles with... Uh, yeah, people don't know. She had an eating disorder. The fourth musical is uh, just me tap dancing. It's just me on stage tap dancing. And then you got David Hyde Pierce coming out, doing something, talking about sorbet. And then the fifth musical is uh, me working at a Gap Kids, and I get promoted, but then I get fired because, <laughs> well, let's just say it rhymes with sexual harassment. And the sixth musical is, yeah, it's a, it's a Scooby-Doo rom-com. It's uh, only got two songs, and it's the same song. And I'll give you the, the opening line of the song. Please. Well, it's a beautiful day for a snack. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, look, I, have I written them all? You know, that's, yeah. Uh, have I tried to shop two of them? 
Look, Broadway is everything shut down right now. So what I'll probably do, uh, Brian, to yep. answer your question, is animate them and put ah. them uh, and put them on Grinder. Smart, <laughs> smart. Because nobody's uploading content to Grinder. Yep. I keep telling my kids, you know, content is king. And Grinder, <laughs> you, you want to talk about a quick response? One time I got so drunk, I was coming back from a softball tournament in Queens. I get home, I pop open a couple Corona premieres you know, cause less carbs. And I, I, I get on the bike and I'm doing a come down and, uh, or cool down. My cool down involves a lot of come. And so, and so I'm on the bike just feeling good. And I get on grinder and I'm like, there are, there are no funny videos up here. So I stop, start uploading just old outtakes from who's the boss. I got six likes and four dick pics. And for me, that's a pretty good Wednesday. What were you saying, Brian? I answered all my questions, Mr. Danza. Thank you. Okay, great. All right, let me hit uh, life lock here. <laughs> Cybersecurity. What happened? I blacked out. <laughs> I'm hitting life lock. Cybersecurity experts have seen a 15 to 20 percent increase in hacking. People are working at home. They're probably not protected by the corporate software that scans for danger. It's important to understand how cybercrime is affecting our lives. People, you're at home. You're online. You're doing so much from. Uh, at home and you're doing so much shopping and you're getting your groceries online, everything's online. Now protect yourself. You have a car, you have car insurance. Well, you need identity theft for insurance and that is LifeLock. LifeLock, they uh, detect a wide range of identity threats like your social security number for sale on the dark web. If they detect your infos being traded out there they will send you an alert they are lifelock right dawson no everybody it's all identity theft to monitor all transactions at all businesses lifelock can see throughout your business on your own join now and save up to 25 percent off your first year call 1-800-LIFELOCK or head to lifelock.com use promo code adam that's promo code adam at lifelock.com for up to 25 percent off hey uh tony yeah what uh what about Alyssa milano she's out there she's sending all those tweets she's getting into battles with uh rose mcgowan it's really, uh, she's, oh yeah, it's, it's really uh, hectic out there for her. I, I thought she'd, uh, you know, just sort of slide out of the sitcom world and into motherhood, and you know, maybe About come that. out with a line of children's clothing or organic food or something like that for toddlers. But oh. no, she's a warrior. Oh, we used to all the time uh, while we were in between takes would talk about our post. Uh, sitcom ideas and, and business endeavors. And look, she had all the makings of an entrepreneur. I remember one day she was like, what about a smoothie that you drink without a straw? And, you know, I had walked away before she finished the sentence, but, but there was, you know, she, she the amount of tweet beef that, 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 that she's getting into or, or, you know, but I, Hey, if I was on charm too, I probably would have some pent up rage or um, just bubbling, you know, Look, I've always said, you know, what's the male equivalent of a period? Mm. I don't know. Well, yeah, and again, I was hoping, Bri, you know, this is where. You uh, know, you, get kicked in the nuts? I don't know. You tell me. Yeah. No, that's, you know, that's, oh. well, you, uh, well, it's not, it's kind of a rhetorical question, but you can oh. find out, you can find out in, uh, in the Scooby-Doo musical. It's kind of actually <laughs> what happens at the end where Fred and Wilma end up having a baby, right? And oh. the baby comes out. A little, a little, not deformed, but just like, look, if you, if your nose is kind of where your chin should be, you're probably not, you're probably not, your, your parents are probably driving you to school. Let's just say that, you know, the, bu the bus driver is going to have a hard time letting you sit by yourself. So Hold on. I have what's a that? Scooby -Doo, I have a Scooby-Doo related question. Sure. Fred was the guy, but was it Wilma or Vilma? Velma. Oh, oh, Velma. Velma, because Wilma was, was Flintstones. Yeah. Oh, Wilma was Flintstones. Yeah, it was Velma. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I get, my, I get my milfy cartoons mixed up. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Do. I, I thought I was having a stroke, but it's like Fred and Wilma sounds right, except for I know that's the Flintstones. No, Wilma, yeah, you're right. Wilma was, uh, was, was, uh, was, was Fred's wife or Barney? By the Betty, way. I, Betty was Barney's wife. Betty was Barney's I have a conspiracy. By the way you know they were swapping like let's just talk about that like whether those animals you know the dinosaurs they you know they turn to the camera as fred would leave he's like hey don't forget to do the dishes you brontosaurus fuck you know i'm paraphrasing i forget the dialogue on that show but but that that dinosaur would always look into the camera and be like 
you know, Bar you know, you know, Barney's banging. Will you know, what <laughs> no. was your question, Brian? <laughs> Here's the joke. Here's the joke they would do. They would dump all the garbage down the garbage disposal. That's They'd right. Open the gar the cupboard door. I love There'd it. There'd be a bird, like a big pelican, eating all the garbage. He'd look at the camera and he'd go, "It's a living." That was always the joke. It's can I be? Can I be honest? I don't know what that says about my comedic sensibility now or then. I lost my shit when that bird did that. He was because he always had a voice too of like he's like, "It's a living," right? right? Like this, just woe is me, like button up, like I nah, give a jab is a jab. <laughs> And they could, and they could also oh, run that joke on any sitcom, any animated series, <laughs> any anything. It's just they take like nine jokes oh. and just run the exact same thing. Every if you time. take the Hanna Barbera comedy class, it's six minutes long. It's like you do this joke, you do this joke, you say this thing. Barney fucks Wilma. Bada bada bing. Yeah, we go to bed. You add a little sweetener <laughs> at the end. <laughs> yeah, but. The yeah, but do you get the yeah. fuck out of there? All right, let's bring it home, Gina you, Grad. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Gina that was the news with Gina Grad. All right, about last night is the name of the pod, and the Bellman is the name of the movie. It's available May eighth on uh, Amazon or tomorrow. Yeah, go go like. watch go go watch it. It's uh it's a lot. It's really of fun. good. Thanks and for Adam checking it out. Really good. Thanks, it, bud. As well, I need to work more and. <laughs> and we'll uh, hopefully the single lift and we'll get out with the road. And we'll do all our stuff together. I can't wait. Uh, I can't wait. I should tell you that Paul Feig was on last week and said very kind things about you. Very. Oh, glowing. man. That He's guy. Oh, that's awesome. That's that's. Uh, did you try to bust his balls about me, though, and like try to give him shit for putting me in, in any of his films? No, we simply talked to him about. I, yes. I did. Uh, I did mention that we don't see what he sees in you, but uh, he he he. <laughs> Brian dude. did broach the subject. Okay, good, because he's. I mean, dude, he, people forget too that he. I mean, he's so quick. He's got a comic brain. You know, it's like him and I were both tour guides on the tram at Universal Studios, and that was one of the first things on set at the Heat that we bonded over. And then the you know USC connection, and but he's just. I think that's what him and I really kicked it on because the way that we all hang and talk, and obviously, you know, from having him on the show, he's just a, the ultimate, like, yes, Ander, and loves to be in the bit boat. And, and funny is funny. And, and getting to the point, even in Ghostbusters, which, you know, I only getting to voice Slimer was cool, but only having that tiny little part in the band was so much bigger because Paul kept letting me, this was at the point where he was like, I didn't hire you just to be there and fucking wear eyeliner. He's like, you think it's something funny, say it. And it's like, you got a thousand extras and we're at the Wang Theater and I'm being lifted up on a crane and they have a stunt guy and all the shit got cut out because, you know, whatever. But, um, but Paul just kept giving me full jurisdiction to like, he's like, I trust you, man. And he's like, and, and you, you make me laugh, but I know that you're going to not like waste film and you're going to like, he's like, the more we get from you, the better we have to maybe pull from it and, and uh i don't know it's it's cool that just to kind of uh uh you know be on the other end of his directing is 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 cool but he's you know as sweet <clears throat> by the way nobody wears a fucking suit like oh, that guy no. mm -hmm. Holy shit. yeah he and now all that we did talk about all the improvising oh, cool. he did on the set and how he encouraged everyone to do that anyway very fusive so That's awesome. good on you and i wanted to Thanks, pass that along to you before it. uh before we Wrapped George, did up. you hear that? Ah, he's fucking <laughs> gone. I'll tell my real dad tonight. Uh, yeah. Wait, so what? <laughs> so uh, uh, you guys can pre-order my book, which is coming out on the 16th of June. Audio's done, book's done, and it's all sitting there at Amazon. So go get it. It helps me if you pre-order it versus getting it on the day it comes out. I'll tell you why at some later date. You can see a lot of my stand-up including stuff with Adam Ray, unprepared stuff is up at uh, our YouTube page, youtube.com oh, awesome. slash Adam Carolla. So check that out. I'm going to be in Feeding America Comedy Festival this Sunday, 7 p.m. on NBC. Oh, that's awesome. I had this funny thing where I, I was standing in my uh, den or in the bathroom or something, and I was watching Extra yesterday, and they interviewed Byron Allen, nice. and they go, Byron, you're putting together this big comedy festival. And they're like, 
you have some of the biggest stars in the world, some of the biggest names in comedy. And I was like watching it and the, the announcer's like, you got Eddie Murphy and you've got uh, Billy Crystal, you've got Kevin Hart, you've got Adam Sandler. <laughs> and I just, I just heard Adam and I was like, oh, oh my <laughs> Sandler. God. And I was like, of course they got Adam. Yeah. Of course it's not me. You're right. But I was, it's just, it, you can't help it when you hear your name. Oh yeah. When you hear your name, I, even though I knew, he's not going to mention me. He's, he's got 30 people. He'd mentioned Judd Apatow before he mentioned me. But the point is you hear Adam and there's a part of your brain that reacts no matter what, like Brian, not Brian. Yeah. Yeah, how dare you? Even out of context and watching the Olympics, like one of the greatest skaters ever, Brian. Oh, boys on a motherfucker. Oh yeah, that that dude. Even at the airport, if you're like waiting in line for an upgrade, and they're like, "Well, Adam," and you're like, "Yes, like Levine, please come to the Southwest <laughs> counter." You're like, "What? Maroon Five's fucking riding coach." Let me tell you how I, I'll I'll tell you how fucked up I am. I'll be driving to the car, and they'll go. Celebrity, celebrity ce celebrating birthdays today uh, at 52 years young. And I'll go, oh, please say my yeah. name. But I'll think to myself, wait a minute. This is February and your birthday's at the end of May. Why? It's not hey, even your early birthday say month. Why would they mention you? But there's a party who goes, come on. Yeah. Come on now. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. All the places to go. And uh, I think we'll do. Uh, huh? All right. Mm -hmm. What are we doing? What's your, uh, what is the note you got on there, uh, Max? Oh, uh, no, I was, I was just, that was just for you. I was just saying that that, that was a nice bookend to the Dennis Dennis confusion at the top of the oh, show. Oh, bookend. Oh, you know, it was weird. Sorry. He wrote nice bookend and I was talking <laughs> about my book. So I thought you meant book uh, and like the confusion. ending oh, of the, the book. Wow. So we're going Perfect. out it's with exactly a book and end of book confusion. <laughs> By so, the way, bookend uh, is one of my favorite uh, compound words, you know what I'm saying, where you get a compound mm -hmm. word, and we talked about this on my show last week, is two words that can be separate but are said together. Laptop, um, dishwasher, um, mm -hmm. dick face, okay, mm -hmm. dick which, face. Is, which, uh, which is not to be confused with Dick Tracy, which I just mm -hmm. rewatched on TBS last night. Did you know that Al Pacino plays uh, – plays uh dick face in that movie <laughs> he plays two face, two -face. Oh, big boy I, okay Caprice. well yeah, i just watched the trailer but all right. yeah <laughs> all right pre son what i'm getting out of here so all right uh good sports coming up next aj ben's on monday and until next time adam corolla for adam rain gina grand ball brian saying mahalo